Okay, so um, grilling, right? So the first thing we're gonna talk about really is, uh, is the bowl. We're gonna season the bowl, then we'll work with the grill. I want my grill to get up really hot. It's one of the reasons why I have the lid closed right now is so it, the temperature just gets screaming. So your vegetables are really tender. They can be eaten raw. So there's not a lot of uh, long duration cooking we need to do. And so the hotter it is, the better we can get one grill marks and to that flash sear, cook the outside, but not get them all mushy. So we want a really hot grill for that, right? You don't have squeeze bottles. Squeeze bottles are your friend, right? So you throw some oil in there. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, getting all over the place, they're convenient. This is extra virgin olive oil, or I'm sorry, this is regular olive oil, not extra virgin. So don't cook with extra virgin olive oil. Like it's really expensive. It's like the, the Porsche of oils. It has a very specific aroma all to itself. And when it hits heat, it denatures it. Essentially, it's like putting racing tires on a, you know, a Geo Metro. Like you wouldn't do that, right? And so you want those racing tires or the to show themselves off. It, the extra virgin olive oil doesn't show itself off when it's been cooked. So just regular olive oil. It's not expensive. It has no flavor to it, so it doesn't compete. And so we'll take the bowl and we'll take the oil, and I'm just going to season the bowl really first to get started. And then I'll take my veg and it doesn't matter what it is, right? So I've got a bell pepper and we cook these things whole. We talked about using the grill basket, but I think when you cook whole vegetables or fruits, they're easier to manage. They get better caramelization and you can just cut them when you're ready to use them. So I'm going to oil them up. Doesn't take a lot. I'm going to dump them all in. I've got some zucchini squash that I've cut in half. I've got some yellow squash that I've cut in quarters, okay? So the zucchini squash were cut in half. And when you get this, the vegetables, don't buy the biggest ones you can find. Those are the most watery, fibrous vegetables that are available. It's not a good bang for your buck for a flavor profile. So the smaller they are, the more sweet, the more tender, and the less fibrous they're gonna be. I cut the squash into fourths because they're very different sizes, right? You know, you get the big, thick end, the squash end, and then you get that skinny tip and they don't cook the same. So when we cook items, we want them to be relatively the same size. So I'm gonna get them all coated up in the oil. The reason why I oil them first is because I want the seasoning to stick to it, okay? Mm -hmm. So they're well oiled. And again, I didn't use much, maybe more than a half a tablespoon to a tablespoon of oil in the bowl. So we'll use kosher salt. There's nothing special about kosher salt. It's just a bigger grain. You can kind of over season because a lot of it will get knocked off when it hits the grill. It's a little bit of black pepper, not a whole lot. And vegetables are pretty good all by themselves, right? We don't need a whole lot of spice. I do a little bit of garlic powder because it's pretty generic. I'll do a little bit of onion powder. Toss them all up. This is the season the bowl, season your vegetables. You do this when you're roasting, you do it with your meats, you do it with everything. It's just a good basic technique. And you'll notice very nice, light, even oil. You don't want a ton. If you put too much oil in there and you throw it on the grill, the oil will drip down to the bottom and cause those flare ups we talked about uh, earlier in the week. That causes that uh, hot oil to burn and we get those scorch marks and it tastes just terrible, okay? So lightly oiled. What questions you got running up to this point? Uh, this point, we're good. No questions so okay. far. All right. Let me pop this off to the side. So my grill's pretty darn hot. I'm going to scrape my grill. I did this before I turned it on. I'm going to knock off all the nasty stuff. A couple things you need to do with your grill all the time. One is take your your brush and even your spatula and get inside the grates and knock those off. If you start to get that carbonized stuff inside the grill grates, what happens is you don't get the heat that comes through. It occludes the heat and the flame and you don't actually get a grilling, right? So make sure you keep that grill clean. Now, because I scraped it, let me go back and do it again. I've got a bunch of grill dust on here and I don't want that on my food. So I'm gonna grab some paper towel. You can use a towel 
and just roll it up. We're gonna kind of soak this in oil. You can keep it underneath your grill. You can take it out of the house. The problem with not being in a restaurant situation and having an oiled towel is the oil kind of goes rancid after a while. And then you have this towel you have to throw away. I think it's just easier to use some paper towel. And you know that oil you use, like um, when you've cooked tortillas or you've kind of pan fried something and it's kind of used oil and what do you do with it? Well, don't dump it down the sink, first of all. And, and if you do put it before you throw it away, just get another squeeze bottle and use it to prime your grill, Rob. So I just got oil. I'm gonna mix all up. I'm just gonna rub my grill, okay? And if it's too hot, go ahead and use tongs. You don't wanna get your hand that close, but you see all that black stuff that came off? Yeah, you don't want you it don't, Yeah, you don't want any of that stuff on there. And so two things occur here. So this is called seasoning the grill, right? One is knocking off all of the crap that's on there. And the other step is that we're actually applying a thin coating of oil to the grill grate so that it seasons and things that go on there don't stick. You can, you can use things like a starchy potato, but that's kind of nuanced minutia. I wouldn't, you, know, you can rub a potato, the starch gets on there and keeps things from sticking, but who wants to waste a whole potato? I'd, I'd rather throw away some paper towel, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So my, my grill's wicked hot, it's been scraped, I've got good clean grates, um, it's oiled and it's seasoned. So now I'm gonna throw my veg on. You wanna work from back to front. You don't wanna work front to back. And the reason why is, is that if you turn something here and you get a flare up and then you try to reach over to get to the back, you're gonna burn your arm, right? So one of the first techniques of making sure that you can work your grill is start from the back and then work your way forward. And you can kind of, most grill guys in the restaurant know exactly what temperature each part of the grill is. Like, and so do you, you know where your hot spots are, you know where your cool spots are, and then you rotate food around. But most importantly, to not burn yourself up is always work back to front, All right. Again, so that if I put this down here and I turn it and then I got to turn my something in the back, I don't want to burn myself. All right, so I'm going to work back to front. And we talked about leaving food alone on the grill, right? So in order right. for you to get grill marks, like the ones that you saw on that salmon, which were good, you got to leave it be. And, and you don't have to work with your hands. Uh, you know, if, if you're more comfortable working with tongs because it's a little hot, I understand. I actually don't have good kitchen hands anymore. I haven't been in a, uh, in a restaurant well, been in a restaurant or cooking for clients for probably a year now. But uh, I do have some, some good hands. All right, so I, I'm going to leave it be. Right? I'm not going to mess with it, and I'm not going to throw this bowl away. Now, if this was raw meat, this bowl's got to go away, but it's not. It's sure. raw vegetable. So when this stuff cooks, I'm going to throw it back in the bowl, and I'm going to toss it again to reseason, right? Because a lot of the seasoning is going to get knocked off when we're yep. grilling. Okay. So um, I actually want some quicker heat and I want some, some harder sear. So I'm gonna close the grill for a few minutes while we're talking and let that just get hot and start to cook. Now, again, teaching culinary school and most people how to cook, the biggest thing is we don't need to touch it and we don't need to mess with it, right? Cause like, that's like, hey, I'm cooking. Like I'm moving stuff around. Like, no, 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 that's, that's just messing with stuff. Um, to revisit the, the, the idea behind that, our concept is that the heat has to overcome the moisture in the food so that it actually browns. And if we never leave it to sit long enough and we always move it around, those hot spots begin to cool off. And so we want to let it sit, let it get really hot, let it overcome the moisture so that the sugars or the proteins can either Maillard process or caramelize, essentially browning, right? Mm -hmm. And each one of those spots in the back on this grill like is, is different temperature. So while this is cooking, what do you got for questions? Uh, so far, no questions. This looks pretty simple. And uh, the and I was I was wondering about the reseasoning. And it makes mm -hmm. perfect sense why you do that because you're going to lose quite a bit of it during the grilling process. Yep. Yeah, we're going to knock quite a bit of it off. So you're just going to let it sit for what two or three minutes before flipping, or a little longer? Yeah, that's a great question. Like, hey, when is it done or what's going on? It's done when it's done. And so they're usually either textural or visual cues that tell you, Rob, like, hey, this is good, right? It's, it's ready to go. And, and you're 
you've been eating for a long time, right? I mean, I don't remember how old you are and you, you don't have to say it cause we're recording, but you know, you've got a good history. You can look at something and say, Hey, that, that looks yummy. That's usually a really good key for you to say, Hey, okay, it's pretty good. So I'm actually not going to leave it on here for a set period of time. I'm going to chat, like talk for a few minutes and then I'm going to peek. I'm going to pick one up and I'm going to look and I'm going to see how the color is going at different parts of the grill because different parts are different heat and I'm going to adjust that way. That makes sense. And it's, I mean, for proteins, it's a little easier because it's a textural thing as well. But with veggies, I'm a little, little hesitant, afraid of just burning it to a crisp. Yeah. And you, they're smaller. They're not as big. Um, there is some sh sugar content so they can flare up um, and start to char a little bit, but we're not going to leave them on there for five minutes. Like a veggie probably doesn't need to be on the grill when it's this size cut for more than six minutes total. Not on any side. So we're going to go in, we're going to take a look. We're going to peek. And we're going to say, all right, so that's what it looks like right now, right? Let me see if I can get a little closer. All right. yep. I'll take that. That's a good start, okay? So I'm guessing that most of my stuff in the back is going to be the same way. Now, when you want those cross marks that you saw, that's a 45-degree angle. So everything I take here, I'm just going to take and move 45 degrees, right? That's it. I'm just turning it a tiny bit. I'm going to get out of the way so you can see. I'm just going to take it. I'm just going to turn it a tiny bit. Whichever direction it is currently, just turn it 45 degrees and let it sit, right? And we close it up and we let it do its thing. Now, the presentation side is the side that goes down first, Rob. So you'll notice that I didn't, let's use this peach here, for example. If I put this peach down, right, I'm not going to put this side down because that's not the sexy side, right? If I put the peach down, I'm going to put this side down right here because that's the pretty side. So presentation side, presentation side always goes down first so that we can get good grill marks. We can cook it long enough to get the good grill marks, right? And then when we flip it over, most of the time we're just kind of evenly cooking it to the other side, but I don't have to worry about how it looks, right? right. So that's kind of outside of working you know back to front and then the presentation side goes down first and priming your grill those are three things that you can do automatically just to be a, a grill pro pretty easy now the grill, the grill has been going for a little while so i expect those grill marks on the other side to happen a little bit faster and most of my vegetables will be cooked about 50 to three quarters of the way so when i flip them over it's going to be pretty pretty fast now I did leave my grill closed. And when I do that, I start to treat this like an oven, right? I've trapped all of the heat and it starts to cook in 360 degrees, not just on the bottom. When you have the grill open, it's just gonna cook mostly from the bottom up, right? And so you can con control temperature and you can control where you're applying the heat by whether or not this grill is open or closed. Okay, uh -huh. and, in a, and a fast cooking technique, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go through and I'm working back to front again. Okay. So if I were to work right here and it was to flare up and I go into the back, I'm going to burn myself. Okay. Yep. So that's, that's why I'm working. And my wife says to me, I like my shit burnt up. So I, I got to get some color on it for her. Yeah. So my wife is used to with her own cooking. So I, I almost can't go wrong here. That's good. So, so you'll get those nice grill marks. Let me see if I can show what that looks like. You know, they'll get nice there grill marks. Go. Yep. You can touch it and you can feel it. Now it's going to be a little hot, but you'll start to feel when it's tender. And it's telling you it's mostly cooked. So right now, now that I flipped it over, I can walk through. I can touch a few of them. Be like, yeah, you know what? Those are those are soft. They're tender but firm. It's kind of called al dente. So the outside is a tiny bit tender and soft. I don't want to say squishy, but it's probably a good term, but you feel that there's resistance on the inside, meaning it's not overcooked. So I'm going to close it and we'll flip it over for probably two minutes and it's going to be done. And then we're going to move on to onions because I know you like onions. And then I'm going to show you an easy trick to do with peaches on how to get really good color on something that's really delicate. Right? Okay, great. Okay. And so for those of you, if I do record this and I put it out, I'm not looking at the camera because I have Rob on Zoom and we're doing a one-on-one -on -one cooking uh, lesson on the grill. Uh, he's, he's embarking on a really great plant-based uh, diet change and he had some grilled vegetables at a, at a Belgian friend's house. Is that what you told me? Yep. Yeah. And so he liked it and he's like, let's do this. I'm like, all right, let's do it. So 
Um, so now that you've seen here, what are, what's different than what you do and what questions do you have? Uh, actually, um, haven't tried growing vegetables before, so this is all pretty new, and this is making sense. Now, you were going into peaches, which are a little more delicate. What about something like portobello mushroom caps? Are those, they feel more delicate, but in the cooking process, is there any real difference? Yeah, there is. The portobello mushroom caps actually require some extra work. So per, and, and they have what's called gills inside that cap. Right. Right. So you actually, after you rinse them off, you want to take a, a, a spoon, like just a normal spoon, and you want to scrape those gills out. Okay. 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 So you don't, you don't have to, but we do it because they weep. And so after you've cooked them, they'll just bleed and shoot this juice all over the place and they start to break and get flaky. And it's just not the best presentation. Right. So scrape the gills out. And then once you scrape the gills out, you want to marinate them. And you marinate them like you would meat. They're very robust. The mushrooms have that uh, firm texture. Um, they also have that umami flavor. So you can treat them like meat, no problem. Right? So you want to marinate them in advance, pull them out, and then you cook them just like you would a steak, really. Like you'll know when it starts to feel tender on the outside and, and firm on the inside. The key is, is pulling the gills out. And how deep are those going with? So how deep am I scraping with the spoon to get those out? You'll know because the gill is very different than the cap, right? Okay, fair enough. So then if you just throw them in here all together, all those juices mix up, right? Yep. Let them rest a couple minutes. It's great. Squeeze bottles are your friend. All right, so we're going to use peaches. And a lot of people don't like to use uh, the aerosol spray because of the propellants. Um, it, that's a personal preference. When I'm working with something, I just need a really quick spray. I use it, it's easy. I don't do it enough. I, I, you know, I, just, I just don't care about the, the concerns. So I would spray them and I'm gonna spray them all. And you wanna make sure, so I, I actually, I'm sorry, I didn't even point this out because I lost my napkin. Hey, Laura, will you do me a favor? Will you grab the napkin back there? It's over there. So these are wet. And anytime you're grilling anything, that's you want to pat it dry. And so all of these peaches, when I opened them up and I pitted them, I actually took paper towel and I patted them dry to get rid of the liquid. Liquid is moisture is what's going to stick. And the drier it is, and when you apply oil, you kind of remove that moisture barrier and it doesn't stick anymore, right? So... I, would, I just took them, let's pretend I didn't spray it. I would have patted it dry because they were sitting actually on paper towels. I would spray it mm -hmm. or spray it. And then what I'm gonna use, let's just stick that in my pocket. Cause I got a little bit of sugar. Now I'm gonna sprinkle just a tiny bit of sugar over the top. What, what happens to sugar when it gets really hot? Oh, it's gonna caramelize. Yeah, it's gonna burn, really, right? So if you think about barbecue sauce, Right. If you put barbecue sauce on your on your meat or on anything uh, before it actually cooks, it's going to burn by the time you actually get it cooked. So you right. use like barbecue sauce as a finisher on the grill. Things like soy sauce will brown a lot um, and sugar. And I'm using sugar not to make them sweeter. I'm using sugar so that I get quick grill marks. That's my goal here. Like I don't want to have to leave this on the grill and I know my grill is wicked hot. And I closed it so I could bring the temperature back up to 400. But I want to throw them on the grill. I want to get that flash sear. And I don't want to make them all mushy. And so they just explode on my plate. Right. right. And, I'm get, and I'm going to leverage sugar to do that. One thing I'm also not going to do is I'm not going to salt those peaches until after they come off the grill. That's going to draw the moisture out? Yes, exactly. Not many people get that, right? So let's think that you're making a salsa. And, or a pico de gallo. A pico de gallo is really fresh tomatoes um, and all of your ingredients, your jalapenos, your onions. So a lot of people salt their pico de gallo as soon as they make it. And by the time dinner comes around like two hours later, it's, it's all mushy and, and the water has come out of the tomatoes and they've lost their shape, right? So we don't want to do that. And especially pulling the water out when we're going to throw it on the grill. So we'll salt afterwards. That's a really good pickup. Yeah, a nice job. Okay. I'm a, I'm a tad bit paranoid. I don't like things sticking. And I'm going right for the hot spots. And, and you know where the hot spots are on your grill? 
Uh, it's been a while, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, you will. And then the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do are onions. So while I'm waiting for these to kind of do their thing. I know you like, I think you mentioned, you said you liked onions. I know you like fajita stuff when we're talking about how to choose healthy Mexican food. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm using full onion pieces right here. Okay. I'm not going to break them up. And here I'm actually just going to go through and spray them. And I'm going to season it. And I'm going to lay them flat down. And I'm going to cook them whole like that. Right. Because I don't want to chase them all over my grill. And I don't want to use a, a basket. Any particular onion you recommend? White, yellow, yeah. yeah. So some people like red onions. Red onions are really sweet when they get grilled. They've got a great flavor. A lot of people get bad heartburn when they mess around with, uh, so don't do this at home. Um, they get bad heartburn when they eat uh, the red onions. Uh, a tip for that is for any onion, if you really take the time is you can soak them in cold water and it will purge some of that milky substance out that's really strong right. and has a strong onion flavor. Um, obviously you'd pat them dry, you'd throw them on the grill, but at that point they'd be in big rings and they have a chance to fall through. So we try to yep. stay away from that. So look at that, beautiful mark, yep. right? Okay, yep. so what did I tell you, remember? So it's just 45, 45 degrees, that's it. And that sugar is what allowed me to do that. Okay, so um, back to the onions. So you can use any onion. I think yellow onion is sweetest and the easiest to eat. Red onion is probably the most flavorful uh, and white onion is just very oniony. So that's kind of like preference. It depends. I think yellow onions are the best for throwing on a grill and cooking, personally. And All just right. watch out for cellar onions. So like cellar onions are like onions that have been stored by the, by the producers over there. They're wintered, they're overwintered and they're kind of kept cold, but that means they're really ripe and really strong onions. So you can kind of smell them when you go into the produce department, like that's pungent onions. Those are cellar onions that are coming from leftovers from last year. So just be careful with the strength of those. All right, and there's nothing wrong with, with, with checking. You just gotta, if you check and you pick it up, it's hard to put it back so you don't get those beautiful grill marks, unless you're like comfortable, like, oh, let me peek and let me set it right back down. But your hand kind of has to be in there or your tongs, you gotta be there for yeah. a while to get a little hot. Either that or you set one aside as the sacrificial. <laughs> yes. This one doesn't have to look good. Everything else will look good. Yeah, there you go, right? Perfect. Grill marks. So then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna just flip them over. And you can see kind of what that looks like on the grill. I'll show you this one. Right. That's the yeah. sugar. Hey, and you yeah. burn most of the other sugar. It's not, I mean, you didn't add a ton of count. Who cares, right? It's just yummy. It's good product. It's a, you get a good result. Now, I don't want to cook these too much. I just wanted that char and smoky flavor. And as you mentioned, tell, and I, tell everybody else, like, or tell me again. Like, what was it about that grilled vegetable that really stood out? And you're like, hey, I like that. Well, the, the neat thing was that it was texturally it was different. And uh, like you'd mentioned in one of our previous sessions, it changed the flavor profile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really, you know, that, that super high heat changes the, the structure of the vegetable and it makes a big difference. It does. And when it, it changes, changes well, it, it's, it's very apparent. Yeah, it changes the flavor completely. It's not as grassy, they're not as aggressive. They get sweet, you get that smoky char, you can turn the sugars into something that's caramelized. It becomes very complex, there's a complexity to it. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad you enjoy it. Roasting vegetables will do the same thing. I might have to actually do uh, some, I have some roasted vegetable videos on YouTube already. If you check those out, uh, they don't make sense. We can do this with roasted veggies too. Like it's, it's just turning that color. It's changing the sugars and caramelizing them and breaking them down. Um, mm -hmm make them a little more palatable too. All right, so I'm actually gonna pull these off because I don't wanna cook them. I just wanted to get a little bit of temperature on them. I can actually feel them like, yeah, they're starting to soften a little bit, but they're still firm. But they're kind of the showpiece. You throw that on a plate and they're beautiful. Now, I don't care about grill marks on my onions, right? Because there's about 0% chance that I'm gonna be able to keep those in their beautiful discs through the whole time. It's just not worth the effort for dinner time, right? So. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna just cook those down. And when it comes to onions, you're gonna look at them and you're gonna know, like all the tips that I just showed you, you're gonna be like, yeah, those, those onions, it's time to turn them. And they look like something that I wanna eat. So they're done. 
And that's a really good indicator sometimes for starting chefs or cooks out there. Like, hey, when is this done? Well, that looks like the way I'd want it when it came to me from a restaurant. So it's good enough. It's, it's, you're a lot more intuitive about cooking than you think you are if you allow yourself to appreciate what you like and what you pay for. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. So what questions you got? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you do that well? How do you do what well? Or do that easily. Flip onions. Uh, get, get up underneath them and flip them. All. Like you see, I just lost the middles. I lost the middles. Yeah. I have a few of them. Yeah. Well, like you said, there's very little chance of them staying together. Yeah, and, there's not much chance. And you weren't going to serve them all together anyway. You weren't going to serve a, a huge disc of onion. No. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my veg that I've got right here. I'm going to throw them back in that seasoning bowl and you'll notice like all that juice, like that's, I don't know, that's what makes it sexy and yummy was all the juice and I'm tossing it. So you remember when you said that guy who had the vegetables had it tossed in like some kind of dressing or some kind of sauce? Well, yep. you almost don't need one because I just made one, right? So you take about the onion powder, the garlic powder, the salt and pepper and all the different flavors and the sugars that just came out of that bowl. It's good enough. Yep. Right. And, and I am going to. It's my food. I'm going to taste it. Like, you know what? That's, that's seasoned enough for me. I'm not going to add any more, but I am going to toss it all around. Now, the cool thing about these is that if you don't eat them all and you come back tomorrow, you've got ratatouille, you've got soup, you can put it on rice, you can throw it in your omelets, right? So don't cook just a few vegetables, Rob. Cook a whole bunch. Like, there's no reason not to. Like, fill your grill up. Like, you don't want to overload it, but make sure it's hot. And you saw how much I had on there. Right. Like, there's no reason to do this work more than more than once or twice. You can do a lot of stuff at one time. Yeah. Three or four bell peppers. Yep. Yeah. That makes and there's a video on YouTube on how to roll a, a red pepper. Have you seen that one? Nope. Okay. So there's actually a video on YouTube that will show you how to get a, a sheeted pepper with all the ribs and the seeds out really quickly. Okay. Okay. It takes about 10 seconds. So really clearly easy. wrong all this time. Uh, I don't want to say you've been doing it wrong, but yeah, you've been doing it wrong. There's a better way. <laughs> like if, if you want the big filet that you can cut and you know, you can take this and you can julienne that into, you know, for fajitas, you can cut it into strips, you can put it on salads, you can do whatever you want with it. It's just easier to manage this way. Right? Yeah. So for me, these onions are starting to turn translucent, okay? And so that tells me they're done. I don't want them overcharred. It's, it's just not what I want. If you like them cooked more, you can definitely do it. But translucent, so opaque would be that milky white. You can't see through it. You know this. Some of the people who watch this may not. But a translucent color would be, okay, all the water is starting to cook out of my onion, starting to steam out. And when that water leaves, you start to get translucent onions. They're kind of see-through-ish. And that kind of tells me they're good. I can also tell by the shape and the way they're, they're flopping around and how they're tender. Like it's kind of getting soft. Like that's what I want. I don't want them to break down so much that they get mushy or don't hold up tomorrow, right? And that's, that's kind of the goal here is to have food that, that holds up. Now, toss them all around. Don't throw your food on the floor. You let this sit, you can throw some plastic wrap over the top if you wanted to keep them hot. Just remember they're gonna continue to cook a little bit. So be comfortable with where they are from a tenderness perspective before you cover them up. But if you do that, all the condensation and the steam is gonna drip back down and just make a beautiful sauce. Like it's gonna be sitting in its own juices and that's a beautiful thing, right? I think it's a beautiful thing. Okay, so we've done peaches. We've done veggies, we've done seasoning the bowl, we've done re-seasoning it, we've done seasoning the grill, done working back to front. Um, I don't know if I've forgotten anything. You got any questions that I, that I didn't get, that I didn't touch? No, I mean, it seems to be pretty straightforward. Yeah, you just got to do it. You got to practice. You got to see how it goes. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be okay. fun. Yeah, so what vegetables do you think you're going to do? Uh, I can see a lot of zucchini, uh, portobello mushrooms, red mm -hmm. bell pepper. Uh, might also do 
you know, yellow and uh, green bell pepper. Just see if there's any difference flavor-wise. Oh, yes. There will be. Um, that'll be fun. That'll be real. fun. But yeah, it'll be fun. Uh, definitely want to do the portobello mushrooms. My wife enjoys those. Okay. So, How about watermelon? Be... You can grill watermelon. So that's fun. That's a smoky sweetness, which is really cool, right? So you season it the same way. Actually, that one, don't want to put salt on it, but some salt and lime. So if you just cut your watermelon wedges kind of nice and thick, a little bit of pan spray, just a little bit on a wicked hot grill. And as soon as they come off, you squeeze a little bit of lime and salt, it'll blow your mind. Like it, it's, it's unreal. Pineapple, pineapple's another good one. Pineapple's one that you don't have to sugar because it's a little more robust. It, it'll hold up because they're kind of fibrous. Um, yeah, what about the watermelon? Sugar the watermelon? Would, would you treat the watermelon like you do the peaches. Like really hot, a little bit of that, of the oil, no salt, wicked fast flash, get the marks and pull them off. You don't want to cook them for very long. Not at all. Yeah. yeah. So what, gosh, holy cow, what else is there? Um, you can grill anything, right? Some yeah. things require extra steps. We talked about potatoes. Like you wouldn't want to take a, a raw sweet potato and throw that on here. It's just not going to cook all the way through. You'd have to par cook that in boiling salted water first and get it about 50% of the way. Uh, avocado, grilled avocado right now is like the big thing. Um, so you could do that. You could actually grill the avocado, um, just cut it in half, take out the pit. I would spray that just a little bit or put a little bit of oil on it and just get good marks. Like there's another one you can do. Um, uh, asparagus. So I like to blanch and shock my asparagus first. I don't like throwing green beans or asparagus on the grill from raw. I don't think it cooks it enough and it doesn't get a sweet enough flavor. That's personal preference. So what I would do um, is blanch and shock. And, and I have a video on that on YouTube as well. And, and if, you don't find it, I'll be more than happy to do another one of these sessions with blanching and shocking. But that technique is essentially boiling salted water. You throw your asparagus in and you cook it for two or three minutes, depending on how thick it is, right? You can have pencil or you can get the big thick. And when it starts to get just a little tender on the outside, you pull it out and you drop it in ice cold water. What the ice cold water does is it stops the cooking process completely so it doesn't keep on cooking and get super soft. Pat it dry out of the ice water. And then you would do exactly that bowl seasoning technique we just did, right? So you would get it all seasoned, nicely oiled, throw it on the grill, close it, and you treat it like onions. Like, or essentially when they start to change texture, the little tips will start to get a little burnt. You'll know when it looks right, right? You'll look at it and be like, yeah, that's, that's kind of charred and sexy and I want to eat that. If you let it go too far, it's obviously going to be more burnt up and it's not going to be what you want. And if you don't do it enough, you're going to be wishing, you're going to be looking at it going, God, I wish that had a little more color. Well, don't wish, just leave it on there a little longer and it'll be okay. Now, the thing about asparagus though, is they're skinny and they will fall through the grates. So you do have to be very particular attention on how you orientate and how you keep them in place. You could use a grill basket for asparagus if you feel like you're gonna lose more than you're gonna save. Fair enough. But I think you need to par cook those personally. Uh, some other people just throw them on the grill, but I don't like how that turns out. Because they're kind of raw and woody on the inside and they're kind of charred on the outside because it's a high heat quick cooking technique. So it's gonna cook the outside really fast, but it's gonna leave the inside relatively uncooked. And for some things like peaches and some of our vegetables, that's the goal. But raw asparagus and yeah, not not so much I don't, I don't think so makes sense carrots would be another one like you could grill carrots never actually done it i mostly roast those but you'd want to par cook those too anything hard and firm and relatively dense they need to be cooked before or anything that's really really green beans like grilled green beans are, are wicked yummy but you got to blanch and shock them first so that you get that nice sweetness you kind of par cook the grassiness out like if you were to eat a raw green bean you're like that's like eating grass if you par cook it and you blanch and shock it it starts to get a little sweet and then you throw it on the grill and you get that smokiness now you've got a real depth and complexity just a simple green bean that even you noticed that when you when you cook it on the grill it changes the whole flavor of the vegetable altogether. good idea yeah those are good questions yeah, you can grill anything just about And some of these techniques that we did here, like for meats and all those things, it's going to be the same. You're going to season the grill. You're going to wipe it down. You're going to lightly oil and season your meats, and you're going to put them on the grill, and you're going to 
leave them alone and you're going to turn 45 degrees. So like once you learn how to work the grill and you know where the hot spots are and those basic techniques, you can use it with anything. Corn. So actually my wife who's sitting over here making sure I don't make any major mistakes and stand in the middle of everything. Corn is really good grilled. My, the thing there is I like to grill it in the husk and you have to soak the husk so that two things happen. One is the water helps steam it, like if you were boiling it in a pot, and two, the husks don't burn. So a good way to do that is in, um, if you don't have a really big pot that can handle it, is like a, a garbage bag. Uh, it's kind of like, oh, that's not food grade plastic. Yeah, I know it's not going in there for a super long time, but you wanna soak the husks, maybe in a big bucket, a food grade bucket. Uh, soak them for at least a couple hours so that the husks get really wet and you throw them right on the grill, close the lid, and then that water on the husk just steams the corn. And then you get that really nice smokiness that comes from the, kind of like the burning, smoldering husks. So that's another good one. I like that. Those are good. I don't know. I think we covered a ton of vegetables. Yeah, I, strawberries. I wouldn't grill strawberries. I wouldn't gr grill berries. Uh, cantaloupe you can do. Melons you can do for sure. What else? Tomatoes are tough. I think smoked tomatoes are better than grilled tomatoes, personally, but that's me. I don't know. What, what vegetables do you think you want to try other than the portobellos and the zucchini? Uh, carrots uh, was definitely something I was interested in. Okay. Um, but you've pretty much covered everything else. Okay. They might, might try potatoes at some point, but. Uh, Sweet potatoes are fun. Sweet potatoes yeah. are worth grilling. Regular potatoes, not so much. They don't, they don't offer enough of a depth of flavor when you grill them. I think there's better things to do with those, like roasting them in the oven. Like red potatoes would be well, good roasted if you want something that changes the, the flavor of a potato. And that's a whole other thing. Matter of fact, I think there's a video on YouTube about that too, is choosing the right potato, like a russet, um, a starchy potato versus a waxy potato, the Yukon Golds or the Reds. Like, what do you use those for? Um, that's a whole nother food discussion because if you make french fries out of a red potato, they're gross. They don't get crispy and they're fluffy. You can't make a baked potato out of a red potato. But if you try to make potato salad out of a, uh, out of a baking russet potato, what you get is, is mushy, falling apart, grainy potato salad because it doesn't hold together like a red waxy potato does. So in that case, just even choosing the right product helps a ton. So that's, that's a whole nother video. I think I've already done that one. I'm going to have to look that one up for you. Okay. Well, I'm sure I can find Absolutely. Um, you got any more questions? No, actually, I think I'm in good shape. I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be a fun project.